Irving Fisher once called it the money illusion. Now this isn't exactly the same thing, but what we're facing is a recession illusion, which is pretty much the same idea. And this one is bigger, more substantial than it has been in, in living memory. And it's supplied to us by the supply shock, which is now coming down and revealing the illusion as we see deeper and deeper recession, economies around the world having a more difficult time managing their affairs, managing the situation, because it was all an illusion from the very beginning. And what's left for these economies is where markets are leading us. What we got today is more pretty awful data, this time from Europe, this time from Germany, where even the hawks over there at the ECB are beginning to get cold feet on the rate hikes for very good reason, because of the illusion, as we'll see. But the, the hawk in question here yesterday is a fellow by the name of Klaus Knott, the Dutch uh, central banker, known as a, as a rate hiker, who suddenly says, maybe we need to pause here. For July, I think it is a necessity. For anything belong, beyond July, it would at most be a possibility, but by no means a certainty, talking about the rate hikes. From July onward, I think we have to carefully watch what the data tells us on the distribution of risks surrounding the baseline. So the baseline, their, their thinking is the resilient economy that you always hear everywhere from the United States to Canada to wherever, wherever the case may be, wherever a central bank is hiking rates, England, they talk about a resilient economy and inflation risk. Yet at the same time, there's that queasy feeling that maybe it's a lot worse than we think it is. And what we think is inflation and what we think are inflation risks, maybe there's something else. As Bloomberg writes about Mr. Knott's uh, comments, this month's policy announcement from the ECB may contain more clues on where borrowing costs are headed. While some members of the governing council have said hikes need, may need to persist into the fall to bring down underlying inflation, others worry about the 20 nation Eurozone economy, which is battling to exit recession. Like US treasuries, European bond markets, in particular the German bond market, they are not buying this resilient economy narrative. In fact, they're biding their time for the time when the recession illusion is finally revealed, when economies have to normalize to a very different set of baseline circumstances than economists have had you believe. So we have the money illusion, the recession illusion, some really bad numbers from Germany, again, global trade, but not just about Germany, it's the entire global economy. But first, I'm Jeff, this is Eurodoll University. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're interested, you're at our university. We have memberships available where we have exclusive content that talks about what the monetary system looks like, what it is, what a reserve currency is supposed to do, and why isn't the current monetary system, the euro dollar, doing what it's supposed to do, what we need it to be doing. We also have research subscriptions available. I contribute a daily briefing at marketsinsiderpro.com. You can check that out there. I also do a daily deep dive analysis. That's at the Eurodollar University website where we dive deep into all of these topics, money and macro. Information available for you, memberships as well as subscriptions at our website, eurodollar.university. This is another case where we're seeing, first of all, central bankers being revealed, since that's the theme of the show, central bankers being revealed as not really central bankers. I'm talking about specifically QT and rate hikes. And their, their lack of effect, especially on interest rates, and eventually there'll be a lack of effect on the economy too, because economic variables, market variables, they don't correlate with these monetary policies because they're not really monetary policies to begin with. Certainly not that would be recognizable in any traditional central bank format because that's not what these central bankers are, what they do. They're attempting to get markets to do the work for them or economic agents to do the work for them through all of these various programs that don't actually have any direct effect. Quantitative tightening, like quantitative easing, is easy to establish. It's incredibly easy to establish this interpretation. Not only is there volumes of scholarship which back up what I'm saying, often, most often written by these central banks and related entities in the first place, but just 
look around. The ECB, we've talked about the Fed, but the ECB has also engaged in quantitative tightening, which if you recall, we've been hearing for many years now that without the Fed buying, without the ECB buying these bonds, no would be would be left. The bond market in Europe or the United States or wherever, it would be completely disa a complete disaster. Bonds would blow up. Yields would have to skyrocket without central bank purchases. That's the narrative that central banks have been have, have planted in the public mind, not in reality. Instead, what we see, like in the United States with U.S. Treasuries, the ECB has been doing QT since around March. In the initial phase up until the end of June, they were going to let 15 billion euros per month roll off. Since the end of June, they've now pledged to not reinvest any proceeds for their asset purchase program or QE. Therefore, they're doing runoff passive QT. And it has had no effect on market rates. It, just like rate hikes have had no effect recently on market rates. You look at where German rates are today, they've basically gone nowhere since the start of QT. And they haven't gone anywhere or hardly anywhere really since the start of rate hikes. Rates remain incredibly low, which is a huge warning. Central banks want rates to go up, but rates want to go back down, even though they never got very high to begin with. And what people should be asking is why? Why are markets so resolute in fighting against rate hikes and QT and hawkish rhetoric and all this talk about a resilient economy? That's what people should be wondering. What is going on here? The stock market loves the resilient economy. The bond market is betting directly against it. And the reason is this recession illusion. Now, what Irving Fisher wrote back in 1928 of the money illusion, basically he was talking about how human beings work, how we all work in terms of how we, how we perceive our own financial and economic situation, small economic situation. Uh, the, the usual example you hear is about wages. What he said was, and what's been established and validated throughout history is people would rather get a 5% raise when prices are rising at 7% than they would if you offered them zero raise when prices aren't rising at all. Not realizing that a 5% raise with 7% inflation means you're 2%, 2 percentage points behind where you would be if you got no raise but no price increases. Instead, we would prefer the nominal increase, the 5% increase, because we don't really perceive the real situation, the price adjusted situation, which is much worse than zero inflation and zero increase in nominal pay. That's kind of what we're experiencing now. Not exactly the same, but that's kind of what we've been experiencing really since the supply shock spike prices going all the way back to 2021. As I've been saying all along, CPIs have confused people into believing that we were in a red hot economy and red hot recovery, when that was never really the case. Instead, we had nominal increases that looked really good, but those nominal increases were redistributing economic resources all throughout the economy in harmful and unproductive ways. These were not economically and economically driven. They were driven mostly by the pandemic and government overreaction to it, restrictions, all that stuff. Government interferences and all sorts of stipends that were unleashed. A ton of non-economics that made the economy look like it was red hot, look like it was experiencing inflation, when what it was really experiencing was a harmful, harmful redistribution. That's the illusion. And the illusion is being revealed, and it's the, the illusion that has been uncovered by, by these low bond rates, these low yields around the world, not just in one jurisdiction or another, but everywhere, now that they're now uh, not just low, but hugely inverted, telling us what to expect as this illusion comes apart. A perfect example, a really, I mean, a really perfect example of what I'm talking about is found in Germany. Latest numbers, they got exports and imports into and out of Germany for the month of May. These are not seasonally adjusted, which means we get not just the, the exports and imports by euro value, we get them by dollar value. We won't talk about them here, but we also get volume numbers, which are incredibly helpful in uncovering this illusion that I'm talking about. On the import side, you look at German imports, just in euro values, 
And you see, you look at the chart here, what you see is that imports absolutely surged from the middle of 2021. Again, the illusion, it looks like Germany's economy was absolutely booming. Look at all the material that is going into Germany. And Germany, since it's such an industrial powerhouse and a nexus for all the different parts of the global economy, we can assume, or it seemed reasonable to assume, that Germany's booming economy had something to do with the rest of the economy. Now, that assumption, Germany, Germany's central role in the global economy, that's true, but the boom never was. So you look at nominal values of imports, red-hot economy, they've cooled down a little bit in uh, 2023, late 2022 into 2023, so you think... That's not really a big deal. In fact, with nominal values of imports relatively high, historically speaking, or certainly where they were before the 2021 supply shock, you end up like the ECB or any economist or anybody on mainstream financial media saying the economy looks resilient because it's only come down a little. We need more rate hikes and more QT. But then, but then you look at the import values by not value, by volume. And the illusion comes right at you. Just to give an example, in May 2022, just to put some numbers on this, import values were up 35% year over year compared to May 2021. Again, that looked like red hot. But already by then, import volumes, according to the German government, were down 8.3%. And they've only gotten much, much worse since then. Import volumes into Germany aren't resilient, nowhere near red hot. They have utterly collapsed. They're down at 2008 levels. And by 2008 levels, I don't mean the same rates of decline as in 2008. I mean the same levels, the same actual amount of material going into Germany in 2023 as during the worst parts of the Great Recession. 15 years ago, 14 years ago, 2008 and 2009, Germany's economy isn't hot, booming, or resilient. It is in utterly awful shape. But we don't see that because the nominal values have been so divorced. As I said, it, it's not just about Germany. Germany is a central hub in the global trade economy. And who are Germany's two biggest customers? Their two biggest export markets are, well, up until last year for seven years running, it was China. China had overtaken the United States for Germany's biggest partner title. However, given the Chinese economy struggles for the last couple of years, which as we'll see, were not really about the pandemic or the pandemic politics of zero COVID. The United States has reclaimed the crown just barely from the Chinese, not that it's any consolation to the Germans. Again, you see the exact same thing. You look at it by value, not volume, by value, and it looks like yeah, everything's the U.S. demand is really is really hot for German products, especially in 2021, 2022. It's cooled off only a little bit because, you know, just like Jay Powell says in the, in the United States with the Federal Reserve, he needs to do more rate hikes because the economy here is resilient. And by euro values of exports from Germany to to the United States, it seems like that's the case. But then once again, you pull the rug out from you you reveal the illusion by looking at the volume numbers and. What you see is that volumes are much weaker than the values. U.S. demand for German goods isn't nearly as robust as the values make it seem. And that volume in 2023 has fallen back to as low as it had been in 2017 or even 2015. So Germany is exporting the amount of goods to the United States as it had five years ago, eight years ago, and in a couple of cases, maybe even further back. That's not a robust economy for Germany or the United States. It shows the U.S. economy is struggling too. We're paying more to get a lot less. That's not just a problem for us. It's also a problem for Germany because as we can't pay more for less and we continue to ex import less from Germany, there's less for Germany to do especially as fewer euros are coming in for the fewer amount of goods going out. China is, China's, the illusion for China is much, much worse. Much, much worse. Because what you see from the nominal values from uh, 
German exports into China, Euro values, they start, I mean, you, you don't even see the lockdown. You don't really see the pandemic at all. It's as if China's economy is held up really, really well throughout 2021 into 2022. And there's some modest weakening, again, by nominal value in 2020, late 2022 into 2023. So yeah, the reopening didn't do much, but gee, by God, it looks like China's demand for German goods has held up regardless. So a little cooling off doesn't seem to be all that out of line. But then you put up, you pull up the volume numbers and you think, holy crap, this is a completely different picture. Germany is, yes, the, the euro values are relatively stable, but by volume, they have absolutely collapsed. That's consistent with the narrative we keep hearing about China's economy, if not even worse. Chinese demand for German goods has absolutely fallen off. How bad? It's fallen off to the point where it's back to where it was in 2010, over a decade ago. Germany is shipping its two largest customers far fewer goods than you would expect for a resilient economy that needs more effort from central banks, assuming central banks actually did something with their rate hikes in QT. So the Chinese, and not only do we see it in volume terms in China and the United States, what we also see is that in 2023, they're moving, accelerating to the downside in both, both terms. Volumes continue to fall off, but now nominal values are coming down too, which means the recession is accelerating. At the same time, the illusion is being revealed because the economy, the global economy, not just in trade, we have to normalize to an equilibrium. And that equilibrium is not where values are. Values are going to go down to where the fundamental baseline is. The baseline that not the, the baseline the UCB was talking about when they're talking about their 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 the risk to the baseline that they see is inflation, maybe a little bit of recession. The true baseline, the true economic global baseline, is what we see in these volume statistics from Germany. It's not just about German exports or global trade. It's about the fact that we were under this CPI price illusion for several years, thinking that that was the fundamental basis of the economy when in fact, it's much, much, much worse than you think, both long run as well as short run. So why are markets completely ignoring central bank rate hikes and their QT programs? Look at the German statistics. They'll tell you the entire story. I'm Jeff. This is Eurodollar University. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, huge thank you, Eurodollar University subscribers, MarketsInsiderPro.com research subscribers, and always a huge sincere thank you to all our Eurodollar University members. Until next time, take care.